Hello and welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be doing a kit assembly video and it's this uh, power supply kit I got from Banggood. It has uh, 5 rails and they're supposed to be plus and minus 12 volts, plus and minus 5 volts and plus 3.3 uh, .3 volts. The input should be between 5 and 24 volts DC and each channel should be able to output 300 milliamps. So let's see what we get uh, inside this uh, ESD shielding bag. So it looks like we have a mix of uh, SMD and uh, through hole parts in this uh, kit. We also got some small heat sinks, which uh, I'm guessing uh, are supposed to go on each of these uh, regulators. And as it's uh, usual with these. Uh, kits from eBay or even uh, Banggood, you don't get any instructions but all the component values are labeled on the PCB in the silk screen layer so it's kind of easy to figure out where uh, every component needs to go and assemble it correctly. I'm going to use uh, some um, uh, leaded solder with uh, water soluble core uh, and as well I have uh, some additional water soluble flux which will uh, help a lot with the uh, soldering. So let's get started. Because this kit has SMD components I recommend you start assembling with uh, these surface mount parts because it will be easier to get them solder uh, when there's no other components around to interfere with uh, soldering. So each of these uh, SMD packages has a number written and uh, we can see uh, starting from the left we have a 78M12 then a 78M05 so these two starting with 78 are positive voltage reg regulators for 12 and 5 volts and the next ones are 79M12 and 79M05 those are negative uh, voltage regulators for uh, 12 and 5 volts and uh, lastly we have the uh, XL6008 which is a um, switch mode uh, regulator. At this point if you have a fume extractor it's good to turn it on. I always use a fume extractor uh, when soldering except for when I do videos because uh, it, it's very noisy and it will uh, ruin the audio quality on these videos. So I'm going to start by applying some of this water soluble flux on the pads. This will uh, really help with uh, soldering and uh, after I'm done I can just clean it off in, uh, in plain tap water and I will, will be left with a very clean and nice looking uh, PCB. So let's start with these um, Schottky diodes. You need to make sure you get the orientation right and as you can see the cathode is marked by this stripe on the right of the package and we have the uh, same stripe for example marked right here on the uh, PCB. So first of all I'm going to put some uh, solder on this pad just a bit of solder then I'll take uh, the diode and sit it on the uh, correct uh, location. And then all I need to do is solder the uh, other pad. And remember the polarity matters a lot with these uh, diodes so please make sure you put them in the right way around. Next up I'm going to solder this uh, switching regulator. I'm going to start with the uh, small individual pins. Same way I'm going to apply a bit of solder to one of the pins. Now all I have to do is continue with the rest of the pins. As you can see I got a small solder bridge in between those pins but that uh, can be easily fixed. I just need to add some more flux. And then we, with a, a clean soldering iron tip. There you go, the solder bridge is fixed. And remember you also have to solder the tab of the package and the way I like to do that is um, put
put the soldering iron right between the um, pad and the tab so the pad is on the PCB the tab is on the package so I like to hit both of those with my soldering iron tip and I'm just going to feed solder from the side this way solder will nicely flow even under the, uh, the SMD package and uh, secure the tab to the PCB. So this is how the XL6008 should look like when the soldering is done. Now for the actual regulators, make sure you solder the right one in the right place. For example, here I need to solder the 79M05. So this is the negative rail 5 volt regulator. And I got the right one. I'm using exactly the same technique as uh, before, soldering one of the pins. This is how the 79M05 uh, regulator looks like after soldering. These look like uh, ST branded regulators. I'm not sure if they're uh, genuine or uh, knockoffs. There is always a possibility that these uh, components are counterfeit when they come from, uh, from China. But if they're genuine, it's quite nice because you get some uh, good, reliable regulators. There's one more thing I would like to show you regarding soldering these uh, regulators. We can see here the designer of this PCB left these uh, plated uh, holes in the uh, pads for these uh, regulators. So that after we're finished soldering on top, we can go on the back side of this PCB and just flow some solders on, onto these pads and the solder will actually flow through these uh, holes um, and perfectly solder the um, metallic connection on the back of these uh, packages. Right, so now that I'm done with soldering the top side for these uh, regulators, let's feed some solders on these uh, pads on the back. First I'm going to apply some flux. Next I'm going to continue soldering the inductors. It's quite difficult to solder these inductors because as you can see the, the pad barely uh, reaches out through the side so it's kind of difficult to actually touch the pad of the inductor when soldering it. Just need to make sure that solder really gets in there and is really touching both the pad of the PCB and the, the connection on the inductor. The next step would be to uh, solder the uh, resistors and the uh, ceramic capacitors because these are the next uh, components in, in size and actually height of the PCB so it's nice to get these out of the way. Now for doing the ceramic capacitors, you do get the uh, small markings on each uh, capacitor and you need, you need to match that to the uh, label on the PCB. For example, this one is 100 nanofarads, it's marked 104 and we need to place it on the PCB in a spot where it's marked 104, for example like this spot. And as mentioned in, uh, in other assembly videos, just try to orient the um, capacitors to have basically the, so that you can read their values from a single side of the PCB. So after a bit of work I got, I got these uh, capacitors soldered in at roughly the, the same height just for aesthetics. Next up I'm going to continue with soldering the LEDs. Um, the LEDs do have a, a longer positive or anode lead and you need to align that with the uh, marked marked uh, silk screen on the PCB. A uh, mini USB connector will go in next. Next I'm going to solder in this component which uh, I believe it's a PTC. 
to limit the the current from from the uh, input through this uh, uh, whole regulator and uh, it's marked UF300 I'm not sure but it could be uh, either a, a 300 milliamps um, polyfuse or I doubt it's a it's a 3 amp fuse because it will exceed uh, very much the limit of the uh, USB standard so this is probably a 300 milliamp polyfuse and it will go in here next I also solder in the DC input jack this is your standard 2.5 millimeter uh, center positive uh, DC jack Next, let's also solder in the electrolytic capacitors. Let's start with this uh, smaller one, 22 microfarads. And uh, we have the negative lead marked on the capacitor, and is also the shorter lead. And we also have the negative lead marked on the PCB. So you do need to be careful and uh, follow the polarity on these electrolytic capacitors, because they might uh, explode when um, reverse biased. So we have a bunch of these 22 microfarad capacitors. This will be of course for filtering the output of the uh, of the switching regulator or perhaps to provide a, a nice stable input at the linear regulators. Looks like I was supplied with uh, three 47 microfarad uh, capacitors and I need four but I have an extra 22 microfarads so um, yeah it, it will work just fine with uh, 22 microfarads and we also have a couple of these bigger 470 microfarads these are most certainly and uh, we can see that for sure because they are connected right at the uh, output of the switching regulators this will be the storage capacitors for the output of the, the switching regulator. So that's why these need to be higher in value because they uh, obviously take uh, all the, the ripple from the output of these uh, regulators. So now all we have to do is uh, solder in these uh, screw connectors and the pin headers and we're done. So this is how the board looks like after I'm finished assembling it. You can see there is lots of um, flux residue, but that can be easily cleaned with uh, water and this anti-static brush because I have used uh, this water-soluble flux. And that makes it uh, awesome because I'll just go and uh, give it a scrub and it will be perfect afterwards. So this is how the board looks like after cleaning it with uh, water and that anti-static brush. As you can see the, the result is, is perfect, the, the soldering is like uh, from an automated assembly line and there is no residue at all left on this PCB. So that is the advantage of soldering with water soluble flux and uh, with a solder wire that has a core which uh, contains water soluble uh, flux. I have always preferred this solution because I like my boards to be nice and clean when, when I'm done with that. So right now I just have to leave this, this board uh, to dry because there is still water left under the, the components. It would be nice if, if I would have a, a, an air compressor, I can just uh, blow some air and all of the water will, will evaporate uh, very quickly. But I don't have a compressor so I need to leave it uh, to dry naturally for about half an hour and then I'm going to be back and uh, we're going to be testing the outputs of this uh, power supply. So half an hour has passed and the board is now um, well dried uh, and before doing the final step which is uh, attaching these uh, 
small heat sinks on top of uh, each uh, regulator. I would like to test this power supply because if it has any problem and it needs debugging, I don't want to have those uh, heat sinks in, uh, in my way. So it's best to test it before attaching the heat sinks. So when testing a new uh, project I assembled, I always uh, use my bench uh, power supply and uh, I limit the current to about uh, 50 to 100 milliamps for the first power because if there is any short circuit on the board with just uh, 50 or 100 milliamps uh, I will not blow anything on, on this PCB and then I can increase the, the current as the uh, circuit uh, requires more. Right now I have my bench supply set for 5 volts and uh, 50 milliamps limit so let's uh, plug that in and see what happens. And it seems like uh, we're hitting the limit on my power supply. I'm going to increase to 100 milliamps. Well, I think something is not right. Why is this thing pulling 100 milliamps? It has nothing on the output. Let's see if any of these uh, regulators are getting hot. No, they don't seem to be getting hot. Let's increase to 200 milliamps. Yeah, and after after so after going uh, above 200 milliamps, it went out of uh, current limiting mode, and right now it's pulling 140 milliamps. So it needed that uh, startup current possibly to get these uh, this step up switching regulator running and then these um, uh, once once the switching regulator has started and is uh, has reached the required output voltage everything works and uh, the current uh, draw drops so let's let's uh, check the output voltages with these uh, with this multimeter so this is the plus 3.3 volts output and we have uh, the required voltage. This is the minus 5 volts. Yeah, we have this one too. This is the plus 5 volts. This one works as well. And the minus 12 volts. This one is a bit uh, low. And the plus 12 volts. So just this uh, minus 12 volts rail is about 200 millivolts um, lower than, uh, than it should but I guess that is within the specs of this uh, linear regulator so that was the assembly video for this multiple rail power supply and uh, I hope you found this video useful if you enjoyed it please hit the like button below as always don't forget to subscribe and uh, I will see you next time I will continue by uh, attaching these uh, small heat sinks to each of these uh, linear regulators